Hi, welcome everybody. Uh, let me turn this over first before I get started to uh, Christy Burst. She's the coordinator in Nebraska that actually uh, gets all this going. You've probably had emails from her and stuff like that before, so I'm going to have her do some introductory remarks. Hi, Nate. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rose, for getting this all set up with Ability Tools. I appreciate all your efforts to get this done. And as many of you already know, um, you work with Nate, you're familiar with Nate, he'll be providing us with all the demonstrations for your upgrades today. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to let us know throughout our conversation today. And both of us are available after the webinar if things come up as you're sharing this information with the rest of your staff as well. So before I think, turn things over to Nate, I just briefly wanted to thank all of you for all of your warm welcomes this past several months. and. And more importantly, thank you for your patience as I've been learning this system and, and getting used to the process um, the past nine months or so. Um, please know that as I am now more aware of how this works and I want to make it continue to run great for you, I, I hope um, to make things a little bit smoother this next year and be less reactive to the process. So thank you, thank you for your patience and for your questions and for your warm wishes as we move forward. Um, so with that, I've had the chance to preview all of the upgrades that Nate and John and his team have been working on these past several months. They look great, and I am really excited for you all to see them. Um, so with that, I promise to be brief. So Nate, go ahead, and I'll turn things back over to you. Okay, thanks, Christy. Um, uh, glad to have you all here today, uh, and just feel free to throw things into the chat window or interrupt if need be as you have questions. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through the list here of what's gone on, and uh, hopefully things will be relatively self-explanatory, um, but um, we'll try to adjust to any questions we have. Maybe I'll take just a short pause at the end of each item and then make sure we're, we're uh, to look at the chat window and see if there's any hands up. So first of all, a real easy one, we were asked to add a memory loss as an item category, and now that shows up in here. Um, you'll see that through the searching, uh, which I don't think I have anything marked that way, or if you uh, are editing an item, you'll be able to select that as an option. Um, so that's pretty much straightforward. So if I'm looking at an item, I can change that. I'll be demoing off the actual demo site today, so if you ever and sometimes if you ever want to play and you don't want to mess up your data and you want to go into some place you can do it, the demo site is always available. That's demo at at .at for all com. And um, this will be the demo to show you that we can add the item category of memory loss to any item if you need to. Okay? Pretty straightforward there. Um, we also had requests to make the, the survey questions on a loan form be a little bit more um, easy to read and to understand. So we did a couple of minor changes there, um, but I think they made a decent difference. I'll show you what I know. Hopefully we can get this loan agreement form to show up properly. Actually, I'll have to show that to you later because I don't have any. There we go. Maybe that'll work. Yes, yeah, so I can look at the loan agreement. And I bet what I've done is a couple of things. We've set it up so that the text is just a little bit bigger. Um, the, the questions are actually bolded where the responses are not. Um, a little bit cleaner look. So that was the updates that we made from that. Anyway, we'll go to the next item. Um, well, one thing that was a challenge that we had mentioned is it's really hard, especially some of the folks that have been using the system for quite a while where there's archaic data and users don't have the ability to, uh, they have uh, old data so you can't get a hold of them, either their email is expired or their address is messed up or their phone number. And so um, we wanted to have a number of ways that that can be accommodated for. and. Um, Particularly, uh, we can do that in a non-intrusive way by prompting at loan time and at item reuse time or like removal time. 
And um, so I'll show you that, but it's going to kind of pop up in a number of different areas. So I won't do a complete demo because that's going to uh, come up in a number of places. In fact, I'll show you next with the next one. But um, we also did another uh, feature. Um, and if you're a regional admin, you should now see a, a link at the bottom of the page called Website Settings. And uh, what this will do is allow you to go in and set up a confirmation request date for accounts. And I put this in there for today. I'll show you how that looks. But the idea is once that date is passed, um, users, uh, the first time they log in after that date, will be asked to verify their contact information. And that will uh, be their phone number and their address. And um, so then we should be able to hopefully have a little bit more accurate records. Um, I know some of you maybe work with schools and things like that, so maybe it's a good idea to try and do that and set it up in August. And uh, then when they log in after that, they can update their information. Uh, if there's no date set, that will just not be um, in place at all. It'll never ask. So, um, so I can uh, change that setting. I can either wipe it out if I don't want any date to be in there, or I can put in a date, and then um, things that happen after that will be there. So um, I will then, in this case, log off, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so if I log in with one of these accounts. And this could be just a general consumer. It'll also you do it for um, normal uh, manager type people as well. Um, my hands. Um, what happens is since we're past that date, it will give a little interruption at the beginning and say, "Hey, please update your contact information," and they can update their address and phone number and zip whatever they need to do. And once they hit save information, they just go right on to the next place that they were going. So that's going to hopefully be a helpful way to, <coughs> without annoying users, be able to get their information set up properly. <coughs> Excuse me. OK, so I'm going to log back in here as my regional admin. Okay, next item on the list. Um, we're gonna we've been asked to put in an item where you can, from an item, initiate a loan. And so we're gonna go into an item right here. This is the wheelchair. <coughs> right from here, then I can find a link that says initiate loan for this item, and that kicks me right into the loan um, management screens that we're used to. But the item is already selected. And I can pick the person that I need to be the recipient for that and go on just like normal. And so that's a quick way if you're just loaning out one item to get a little bit quicker into that set. You don't have to bookmark it. You won't have to go to the loan ad page. You can go straight off of that and uh, go from there. <coughs> so that's a, uh, hopefully a little time saver for you. Okay, Along with loans, We've been asked to um, have it so that when you're loaning out multiple items, they um, it's kind of uh, annoying to have to select a purpose and a date and everything for every item in the list. And uh, so we want to try and try and make it a faster process. I'm going to demo that by jumping into consultation mode here. Um, so I'll find. Um, this person, I've been consulting with him already for a little while, so I have some bookmarks. And I'm going to go ahead and initiate the process for five of these items. Um, and you've seen this before. Um, note here, I'm going to take a quick break. This borrow information used to just tell what was there. Now it's editable. So 
if you're on the phone with somebody trying to get this set up, you can, again, update, ask them and ask them about if this is correct information and right in line, update it. Uh, if you change the information here and then go down and complete the loan, it'll save this as well. So that's another one of those ways that we're helping to update contact information more readily. Um, so that's the second of the three there. One is by prompting that login, and the other one is here when you're doing a loan with this person. Okay, but back to my idea here where we've got a whole bunch of items and we want them all to be a different loan purpose. We want them to be actually to serve as a loaner during repair. And next to the purpose and the loan date and the due date and the email reminders is a button. It's called Duplicate to All Loan Items. So when I hit that, I select my purpose, and then I click the button that says Duplicate to All Loan Items, it will actually go through and change those for me. And I can scroll down here, even the ones on the bottom, that loan purpose has changed. And so then I do it all at once for that. Um, same thing with the loan dates. Um, if I want to change that to be another date, I can then duplicate that to all of those loan dated items. Okay. One thing to note here, if you're low vision, that stuff won't really show great on your screen reader. Um, because, because of the way we did it. I don't have a necessarily a better way to do it, but we want to keep the status of all this here. Um, and if you're somebody that knows a low vision, I'd love to see how that experience is for them. And if we need to tweak that, um, I think we would want to. But I think just being able to click on the button, which should show up in your screen later, and then just kind of trust that that happens all the way down, it should be okay. Um, but um, I'd be curious as to what the experience for this is on a low vision user. But then it's just like a normal loan, everything's selected and I can go down and finish my loans. Any questions on that one? That was kind of a bigger change than some. Okay, uh, one thing that we did too, it was very obvious, I'm going to go back here and uh, end my consultation session. It was quite obvious that uh, there was a problem when um, we had something that was a featured equipment item and say it was an exchange item or a reuse item where it might be um, sold or given away. Um, what was the problem was that we had instances where people would actually do the uh, reuse tracking and market is sold or market is given away, but then it still showed up on the site and it would give a really friendly error like, hey, you can't see this item um, and that's kind of discouraging for the end users to see. And so we didn't want that to happen. Um, so we've added features so that if we remove an item, it will also take it off the featured item list, and it also takes it out of administrative checkouts. We've had some problems with that too. So um, I'll just demo that quick here and go down to the removing of the item, and if I, I'll mark it as given away. I'll pick a person here. And I'll also make a quick little reference back to that contact information updates. In here, you'll be able to update contact information on a person as well. So if this happens to be a place where you're able to physically visit with the person, you can maybe have, say, is this still your address and uh, update it in line with that. So as soon as we complete this transaction, that will be saved as well. So. Uh, So if I get the right address in here now, um, I can do that. And I'll save that. 
If I'm saving, two things should have happened, one or three things. It should have updated that person's account information. It should have removed it from the administrative checkout list and it should have removed it off of the featured item list, which if I go to the home page, it's not there anymore. So, uh, and it was in the administrative checkouts. I didn't show you that, but it's not there now. Um, let's go back and look for that person. Um, leads me into um, another thing that we did was we made it so in person searching you can look for um, things in the address. Um, so if you know that they were on South Street, for example, which I'm cheating here because I can see this here. Notice that was updated. That's the account that I gave that item to, uh, the happy account. I updated his address and line. But now we've had added new search features. So you can even put in partial addresses and it'll bring up items, uh, bring up people. Okay. And so these are all the people that are on South Street or South something. Um, or if you're like, ah, I kind of remember the number was something about one, two, three, you could search for that and see if that brings up people in your addresses. So that could be very helpful in trying to find some folks later on. Um, any questions there? Okay. All throughout, um, we've also done a little bit of an update on, let's see, I'm sure I'm not skipping ahead. No, nope, I am skipping ahead. So the next thing we're going to do, um, we had a request to make it so that you could switch between the mobile site and the um, desktop site when you're uh, in there on a mobile device. Sometimes it might be handy to have the familiarity of the desktop site if you're on a tablet or something. So I'm going to simulate that right now by making my screen go smaller. So I've got a simulated mobile experience right now. Um, and so this is what it looks like when you're in the, the mobile version. Um, but down at the bottom now, there's a link that says Show Desktop Site. And what that will do is force it into the desktop view. Um, now, if you're a small screen, there will be some things there that will cause problems. You know, you have to do some scrolling left and right to probably see what you want. But it will behave exactly like um, you would expect on the desktop site. Um, and it will look like that from your mobile device. It doesn't force you into that. Now, if you get in here and you're like, man, this is annoying, I'd love to go back, it does have a link here to show the mobile site, and so it'll come back into things for you. Okay. So that's the uh, mobile experience update there. Now, um, one thing, I'm going to demo this via the AT for All uh, Nebraska website um, because they have something that I'm sure you've seen before. Um, if I go in here and I look at my item search, let me make sure this is big enough. Okay. Um, I have, I think it's on page two, there was some. Um, a description of one of the items that was caused a little bit of a problem where the website didn't look as good. It caused some formatting issues up here and stuff like that. Um, that's a, a hard thing to deal with and it's not easy to do, but what we've made it a little bit thing is that I find that this is the item that has the offending data. Um, I'm going to go ahead and edit that item. You can even see here that it makes it look ugly. Um, and that's just probably because sometimes you copy and paste off a website or even off a Word document could cause this trouble. So we've made it so that when you um, do copy and paste, actually I'm going to cut in this case, um, 
you can um, it will strip out that formatting and it still has the text and I can even still go in here and uh, make things bold so that it has some formatting a little bit for easy, easy readability um, but it doesn't break the website with the formatted code that came in there. And then I can go ahead and update that. Now it's still got a few troubles. But uh, that's the point is I think it's related to this uh, down here. So um, that's something you can try. And certainly, hopefully, this is limited in what it happens compared to what it used to be. Um, so I will. Um, does it allow for HTML editing is the question that I was posed. Um, not really. There is HTML type stuff in there, but we don't have the ability to go in and edit that in that fashion. So, and that's kind of what's going on with this, where it's not updating properly, is there's some HTML stuff in there, um, and it's a little bit hard to get rid of it. So I can do that from the back end or something. Um, if you ever get into trouble with that and you're not seeing how it works or how well, uh, how to overcome it, uh, you can just give me a ring sometime and I'm happy to help with that. Um, or Christy might be able to help as well. Okay, so I'm going to go back out of that. Um, it was occurred to us, it was reported that during the loan process, particularly when you're doing the loan ad, from the uh, FA, the the admin site, um, that this search here was not very awesome. Oftentimes, you could search and get an iPad, and it would uh, well. Okay, I got to get something that works fine. I'm on the demo site. I don't have good data. Um, And it would come up, and it wouldn't be ordered in a very good um, option. So we've changed this to include relevance on that, because what that'll do, it doesn't show it here, but uh, let me see if I can find um, a good search phrase. Oh. That doesn't help. I'm not giving good examples because of good data. But what it would do before was there would be things that you wanted. They would show up a long ways down the list because it was actually sorted alphabetically. Um, and so that doesn't work out too well. Bubble. <laughs> Bubble bath. Got it. Um, so um, that should be an improvement there in how that loan search works. Um, it made sense that um, that was a problem. And so thanks for reporting that, those that did that. It kind of one of those things that um, doesn't work out so well. On administrative checkouts, we've got a lot more options for viewing things. We have included the photo uh, of the item and the thumbnail and the information. Also, we included the type and web ID of each item that's in there. So that should make it a little easier to find things if you're needing to check them back in. Also, before we could do a program, but we could also, now we have a transaction type search as well. Um, and so we can find all the loan items that might be out there, or if you just checked out demo items, you can um, find those. That kind of thing should help you to be able to find that. In addition, We've allowed for sorting by web ID and when it was checked out. So you can uh, have some uh, better capabilities or finding things in that uh, admi administrative checkout. So it's not such a uh, hard place to find what's going on. So hopefully that will be an, a big assistance for you on that. Okay. 
Okay, also we've included some additional sorting options on reuse items and exchange items. So I'll just do it on the recycle refurbish repair link, which is basically the reuse items. Um, and I'll pick a option here. If we look at the completed items, you'll see that there's quite a few. I'm sure you guys have even more than this. So finding things is a little bit of a pain. You can do the search like you always have, but it searches now. You can do a sort by web ID if that's what's something that's handy for you. Um, you can also do it by recipient. I think that was another option that was requested. And those can get you a good way to find what you're looking for um, in those lists because they get pretty large after a while because you guys are working hard. Okay. Oh, and I already went over the searching by address, so we can do that now. Um, now, one thing, too, that was brought up was these, uh, when you have an uh, account with an important alert on it, those sometimes don't show up. I had some little, like, red exclamation points out there. Not very obvious what's going on, um, but I believe that uh, we set these up now to have a little bit more prominence of what's happening with that. Okay, um, so then you should have a little better idea of what's happening with those accounts. We've also improved that um, if we do a um, a loan for that. Person. Uh, I think it was trying to find the right account. Nope. Find the one I was looking for there. Sorry about that. The best because I can't find that and so maybe we can do demo yeah and so right now I have that exclamation point in there you can probably see that uh, but when I select him and we go on to the loan we notice there's an important account note there and one thing I did too if you wanted to know what is that important account note you can click on his name and it'll pop open a new tab. Notice behind here is still our information that we're doing with the loan. It doesn't interrupt that process, but I can click on that and then I can see, oh, here's what's going on with this, this person. They don't really return items. So um, we can deal with that in whatever fashion is our normal practice. So a little bit more prominence on that. Several areas we do that. Okay, it was requested that we uh, adjust how um, serial numbers work. Um, and I think it was this one. If you're a manager, you will see uh, the serial number show up if it exists for an item. But if you're a general uh, consumer, you won't. And you won't be able to edit this either. Um, so this will be there, and it's kind of information that's mostly important to an item manager. Not that big of a deal for uh, consumers. Uh, so that shows up there. If I log on as a consumer, I can look at the same item or if I'm not logged on and there is no serial number listed there so it doesn't show up. So that's the update on serial numbers. Uh, since we're talking about items too, you might have noticed this already that there's a weight item, weight uh, property of each item. And uh, it turns out, and we found out this is uh, through um, 
several conversations that uh, anymore uh, a nice attack of getting grant information is by uh, you know knowing if you contribute to the landfills or not or since we're reusing things and we're loaning things just think of all that weight we're not adding to landfills and so if we keep track of what how much an item weighs uh, that might be a way if there's some uh, grant angle that would ask for that information that you could pull that up. Um, that is shown. Uh, I've got to log in as a manager again. In the uh, admin help area under the uh, data export also. So you can see in here, if I'm looking for items, um, I have the ability to uh, add in the weight as an option. Also, we had a bug fix because the location was not in there before. And it was something we added, but it wasn't added to the data export. So we added those things in as well. So. Um, if you can, that will now show up in that uh, data export option. So there's that. Um, wow, it seems like that's mostly the bulk of what's happened. Is there any questions or things you want to see again? Um, that pretty much concludes uh, what's been changed. Since you're all here, I have a thing I could ask you. I've had it proposed to me from uh, someone before that maybe we could have some cool things that would help out with uh, maintaining inventory control, uh, particular um, about uh, if I want to know, take an inventory of my loan pool or something like that, that I could actually go through and do that and maybe have a record that, you know, on the 15th we did an inventory. Um, that's something that seems like it would be a really good idea to do and uh, be interested to know if you guys are thinking about that. That might be something we throw out on the next round of updates for a proposal. Uh, but I'd also just ask you to uh, be thinking about what are some things that we need to do for updates and, and it's not too early to start thinking about next year's updates. Um, and I got a question from John in Maine that, uh, are these revisions on our sites? Yes, they are out there now. I put them out there Tuesday, so some of you might have noticed them, but um, those are up to date and uh, you're all running with the latest on um, that data and uh, functionality. All right, thanks, Nate. This is Christy again. Um, we can certainly add the maintaining inventory control to the upgrades list for next year for further discussion if you'd like. Um, and I've already been giving a couple of upgrade suggestions as well that'll be here before we know it, I think. Any other questions from the group? Well, I guess I will just close out. Feel free to email me or Christy at any time. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate working with you guys. I uh, always love, it, love hearing from you, and um, you guys are really good about helping to pinpoint any challenges we face and that makes it really quick and easy for me to update things. And so I appreciate that. You guys are super awesome to work with. And uh, so I'll just tell you thanks for that. Well, thank you for doing all the work. More than welcome. This was fun. All right. It sounds like that concludes today's webinar. Nate, his team, myself are all available for um, questions as they come up. And let us know if there's anything we can do in the future. Thanks, everybody.